just kind of broadly speaking, how has the pandemic impacted the work you do? And can you share an example of how your organization or perhaps a partner organization has used data and or technology to adapt to that change? We actually hosted an event last year on the use of digital or the use of technology and pandemic preparedness and response. So it was an opportunity to host, um, you know, what was a theoretical conversation last year to a very real conversation this year and hosting many additional discussions from that. Um, but what we've seen from our partners, especially, is on healthcare organizations. So especially as we look at rural healthcare delivery models that may use community health workers um, and other frontline workers on how they've really had to adapt to both reach patients, but also keep their employees safe. So how do you ensure the safety of your staff and continue to provide care to patients who may be in remote areas who may not want to visit the, an actual clinic? And a lot of that is gonna fall on the use of digital technology wherever possible. What's really changed is our mindset. So there's been a significant mindset shift. So for example, instead of just business as usual, we really try to think in terms of what does this pandemic really require and what are the phases? So first and foremost, it was how do we respond with all of our corporate assets immediately and bring the power of the platform to bear on the pandemic? And when I mean platform, I mean our technology, which is our product, our people, and also our capital, because we do grant giving and we do impact investing among other types of capital that we deploy. So there was this notion of how do we really pull not just our customers, but our communities out of this pandemic. And from that resulted this package bundle, you know, for lack of better words, called Salesforce Care. So that, for example, included trainings, the latest information from, let's say, University of California, San Francisco, or leveraging what, some, what the business roundtable has put together. So there was an informational component. There was a grant making component. As we thought about small and medium businesses, they needed cash and liquidity immediately to get back to work. There was this health sort of responder component that was mentioned earlier, and also just information. And how do we listen? So there's a, there was a social listening component that was offered through um, Salesforce Social Suite. What happened uh, immediately after COVID struck is we realized that there was all the more need for information. People were looking for answers. There was also an overbear, like there was a lot of information that was happening in general overall. So we felt that there was a really, this was an uh, important time for us to provide some medically verified information. And having had uh, information, like having had experience with WhatsApp, we knew that that was a really great platform. Uh, so we decided to go like shift our two-way model a little bit and decided to go sort of one way where we started developing uh, a couple of bots like uh, bots where uh, which can help provide information to the user and give the power in the user's hand to choose what they want to see. And another thing that we did, did then created a service which was very, very frontline health worker specific, uh, focused on healthcare workers, which was again a WhatsApp service, but it was uniquely created for them. And it had all the medical information that they would need because we realized that in the early months and even now guidelines were changing literally every week. New researchers were coming out every week and for the healthcare professionals who were on the ground uh, battling this pandemic, there was, a, there was so much information and for, so much for them to be up to date on that we realized that this is a service as a bot that they can use to quickly access information which is updated, which is correct, and be informed and at what needs to be done on a medical uh, front. One thing I'm really curious about is really what about, you know, each organization allowed them to pivot. Um, so in your case, you know, what allowed Nora to pivot so quickly? Just that dedicated mission and every, of each and every, that, uh, that motivation of each and every person within the organization to continue to support families, to make sure that the kind of information, the kind of support is provided in the COVID reality is I think one of the biggest things that helped us. Really ramping up our work around partnerships and leveraging the existing relationships we had, whether we're talking about large organizations like Deloitte or PwC, or we're talking about our engagement with social enterprises on the ground through a larger alliance and really trying to listen and figure out 
what remote communities need most and how we could possibly leverage our technology and provide advisory support to serve them in a very difficult time. So I think that the power of our relationships really helped us. And then flexibility as with with the other enterprises, just being able to pivot very quickly um, and spending those those long hours to actually, you know, achieve that pivot. The only other thing I'd mention, which is a little different about sort of a large corporate corporation is templatization. So as much as we needed to be flexible, it really helped that we had like templates and ways of working and structure. Um, I think that's being sort of uh, underestimated these days, but that was important as well. Echoing what Samira said is really the value of these partnerships and relationships. Um, And that has what's allowed us to continue this work um, and be innovative in how we respond. So while with our FinTech for Health program, um, we have been very fortunate to also have a very strong funding partner. So the fact that MetLife Foundation is also quickly looked at how they use their resources to support um, COVID responses and looking at how they work with their grantees and their partners um, to respond as well. So we're very fortunate to have a funder who we align very well with and it feels like a partnership. And then also through that, through that partnership as well is, and through FinTech for Health as well, we started FinTech for Health really looking at digital finance methods, um, specifically around digital financial services and taking a more of a financial inclusion approach to care or to payments. Um, the, we've also seen as well this integration between digital health and digital finance that I think we saw it as something that would, would come about much later in, in the future. Um, digital, as digital health has sped up, these, these models have as well. So while we all work with technology tools and data, um, the response is very human driven um, instead of the other way around. And I think just if anybody can share just a quick um, thoughts on, you know, if we work in this space, how is technology a tool rather than driver of what we do? Um, and if you can give an example of that in the work you do. The risk willingness of very traditional sectors, such as insurance and finance, has not changed um, as quickly as, as everything else. So when it comes to digital financial services, the technology is, technology is there. Digital health, the technology is there. And while the healthcare sector has you know, been more traditional, they have to start using digital health because it's the only option in a lot of times right now. Um, when, it comes to, when it comes to the health financing side, um, you know, we're, we're still seeing the same barriers that are very much human driven. Um, so even though the, the platforms and the, and the technologies are, are right there in front of them. So for us at Nora, I think we've been trying to figure out how can we learn on the ground much more quickly than before. And it's, um, I feel like we were doing it quickly before. Now we have to do it even much more quickly, which is kind of wild for us. But it's things like, you know, what kind of conversations are happening as is and how can we learn from them, um, whether it's from the WhatsApp Um, services that Samina had mentioned. So what can we pull from there and what can we learn from the types of questions people are asking or even the metadata that we're seeing? Um, Or even I think just learning from our, we also have a huge network of other NGO partners that we've worked with during the pandemic. And so it's also leveraging, I think those conversations that they're having and that they're hearing from on the ground as well. Looking a little bit towards the future now, um, and I know we've all touched on this a little bit in what we've been talking about, but because of the pandemic and what we've learned, what can we apply post-pandemic or what opportunities have come out of the pandemic uh, for data and technology in the social sector? Um, so we've obviously talked about how um, it's become a necessity um, or it's being seen as a necessity now. Samira mentioned that um, where it was a nice to have, as Satyam said earlier. So, so what are some of those shifts and those opportunities that we can have going forward? This transformation has happened really, really quickly. A lot of people have gone on remote. So one of the things we've realized is the area of something that we are calling digital empathy and how do we move and how do we start connecting with humans using technology more? In terms of work, I think we've all spoken to sort of the power of the pivot 
and in partnership with the others. The two pieces of that I would highlight is one is partnerships even with those in the private sector who may be your competition. So one of the things we're thinking about is a reskilling initiative. I think reskilling is very important. And we're also speaking to other technology companies like Amazon and whatnot to really pull that together. And I think that that is going to become a necessity as the world becomes unpredictable and we have to pivot quickly. We have to be open to sort of partnering with unlikely partners. That's one piece of it. I think one thing that has really um, been demonstrated over the last six to eight months is while pre-COVID, a lot of us wanted to talk about the power of deep tech and how it was going to change the world. But one thing that we've really learned is the power of simple, easy to use technologies and that the best use of technology in the last eight months has been getting accurate information to people. Um, so getting information to people, being creative and how we send information, but um, communications, whether this is coming from government, from private sector, from a community-based clinic, um, so that people know not only about COVID, they know their symptoms, but they also know what they need to do. You know, it's really simple technologies um, that are being used over and over again to get people the information that they need when they need it. As we're wrapping up, I just a, a few takeaways from my side from all the wonderful things that you have all shared. And, and one is that digital transformation now is really an imperative that we've seen in you know the pandemic. We need to have these tools to connect everyone, um, whether the rural populations or even amongst our own workforce now. Um, they're really important. But in order to do that, we really need to focus on accessibility. Um, and so we can't lose sight that not everybody has the same access. Um, and I know this is true globally. I, we're very India focused during this session, um, these sessions today. Um, but even in the US where I am from, a lot of communities do not have the access they need to, to do online schooling or other things. So really thinking about that globally. Um, and then the, the next one is that, you know, in the future, we are going to see other crises just come up. What can we do? And it's really being flexible um, in the way we respond to things internally, but having, as Samira said, those templates and the plan. Um, you know, Adrian was already talking about pandemics before we had a pandemic. So I think having the, the plan and being prepared, um, but also being flexible when the time comes within our organizations. And finally, that Listening is really important and one of the best uses of technology that we have. So listening, collecting data, and how we um, create digital empathy through that. And I think, you know, both in the tools, but also in, in what we're understanding and what we're asking and what we're learning from people through these tools.